Welcome back to Fast Market on the TD Ameritrade Network. I'm Tom White, joined by my co-host Kevin Hinks. But let's bring in our next guest uh, for our cash tag segment, and that's going to be Megan Brantley, the Vice President of Research at Likefolio.com. Thanks for joining us, Megan. Thanks for having me, guys. All right. We're talking Chipotle ahead of their earnings today. And I, I looked at some of the data and sentiment that you had. It's all plant-based stuff, Megan. <laughs> I mean, we need some steak, uh, steak information here. But it seems like a lot of the data that you're seeing and the positive data that you're seeing is based on their new chorizo uh, product that's uh, plant-based. I know. Where's Jenny whenever you need her, whenever you need an ally to come talk plant-based with you guys? But what we wanted to do is look at, you know, what is driving this demand surge and this buzz surge that we're seeing within Chipotle. Whenever we look on a year-over-year -year basis, we see demand is up about 5%, and we see that buzz has increased by an even steeper clip. I think it's up closer to 9% on a year-over-year -year basis. And so whenever we look to see, okay, what's driving this, one of the main drivers was their launch of the new um, plant-based chorizo. And and also the lifestyle bowls. I think these kind of go hand in hand, but what we saw whenever we looked at this is the plant-based chorizo was actually um, drove demand higher than when they released their you know, original chorizo. And so I think that this is just an example of how Chipotle uses this new menu innovation to kind of drive demand. And, and even, you know, we saw this drive demand whenever they released their brisket. Obviously, this is probably the exact opposite of um, audience for the brisket. However, it still is driving new consumers into their doors, um, especially as they kick off the New Year's and many people are, you know, trying different diets. Um, just from a macro perspective, we see consumer mentions of plant-based diet following or, you know, trying to incorporate plant-based menu items into their diet up by about 33% year over year. And so I think that this is, you know, this is a small portion of their audience, but it's still relevant and it is starting to move the needle, at least on a big perspective, big picture perspective in our data. Megan, I had such high expectations for this segment, <laughs> and this is such a buzzkill that we're talking about plant-based meat. I mean, come on, you're on a, you're on a show with two, uh, clearly a carnivore-like person like me. We're talking about plant-based. Stay away from my Chipotle. That's all I'm going to say with your plant-based stuff. So, Megan, from, from a trading perspective, from a stock perspective in a company, they've hit this company hard in the last few months. Now, that may maybe have more to do than interest rates and its growth and the overall market sell-off. Because this, your charts look quite impressive. The question is, are these charts that you're talking about, is the scale of these a game changer for Chipotle? Or is this, Chipotle's going to move and this is just a long for the ride? Are you seeing enough data or enough touches here to make this a significant data point for Chipotle? So I think that from our perspective on a big picture, um, big picture view, we look at consumer demand and those are tilted heavier to people who are actually going into the store. So when we look at people talking about going to Chipotle um, and things like that, we see that up by about 5% year over year. So for us, we see that as a positive sign for foot traffic. Now, is that anything extremely riveting? Not necessarily, but this is one of the first times that we've been able to look at this name and actually see um, a significant you know, year over year improvement when it comes to something like foot traffic. I think another thing that's worth noting is that it's digital, um, those orders, we aren't seeing those slow down either. Uh, that's a smaller segment of our purchase intent mentions, but when we look at those specifically, those are up by about 18% year over year and up by about 22% quarter over quarter. So I think that this shows that demand is, is definitely still building in Chipotle. We think that they're going to have a really strong report, but what we can't anticipate is, you know, what are the costs of these ingredients and, and things of that nature? Will that have any impact on margins? You know, that's not necessarily something that our data can capture, but at least from a consumer perspective, it appears that Chipotle is outperforming other fast casual peers like a Shake Shack, for example. And a lot of that has to do with its menu items innovation and it's just digital adoption rates. Yeah, and I kind of wanted to hit on that, uh, the second chart that you had, purchase intent versus sentiment on a 30-day yeah. moving average, uh, Megan, because that kind of sticks out to me. So when you've got, you know, purchase intent lower in McDonald's and Shake Shack, but at the same time, the number of positive ones 
Chipotle actually underperforming McDonald's? I don't get that one. Shake Shack, <laughs> I, I get that one. People like Shake Shack. I've got Ocheval here in Chicago, so I don't even look at Shake Shack. But is that is that because, you know, nearly 50 or f over 42 percent of the Chipotle's revenue is digital sales, right? And that's the delivery systems, a lot of that, right? Mm -hmm. And just from my experience, that delivery of Chipotle isn't as good as going to Chipotle. And they don't have the amount of drive throughs that maybe some of the other uh, players do, like McDonald's and Burger King and, and uh, names like that. Is that probably why you're seeing the, the drop off in positive mentions for Chipotle, even though the purchase intent is off the charts compared to the other two? Yeah, I think that you make a really good point. The the main two drivers of negative sentiment for Chipotle are people who like to dunk on them for releasing plant-based meats like you guys and then also people who oh. have had <laughs> I know <laughs> also people who have had um, maybe a poor experience with deliveries. There are some tweets that showcase, you know, I just got my bowl and like it, I'm missing chips or they forgot to put this in the order. So I think that there are definitely improvements that can still be made within Chipotle's system. But overall, I don't know if you guys have ever used Chipotle's app. It is um, a phenomenal user experience. I know just from an anecdotal perspective, whenever I'm going through, I use DoorDash for nearly everything else. But if I'm ordering delivery from Chipotle, I go straight through Chipotle because I like how their app is set up. So I think that their ability to push uh, notifications and kind of lure members in to continue to purchase and maybe have something delivered, I think that's something, a positive thing that they have going for them. But, you know, from that delivery perspective, they're still reliant on those third party delivery partners. And so there's definitely room for improvement in that arena for sure. You know, it's amazing, Megan, that this company continues to grow and continues to grow digital uh, revenue, even with a return to the stores. Their digital yeah. revenue is still growing. So, th th you know, this is a company that you can see the sell-off, right? At the lows, it was about $600. Now it's about $500 off its high. You can see it got hit with the rest of the growth names because this is clearly a company that is still growing. But their margins are getting big, are, are getting better. There's still a lot of things going on here. And your presentation does nothing to talk anyone out of why they should look at Chipotle and possibly trade Chipotle. Because, you know, when you see a stock sell off $600, now $500, everyone's looking for a reason why, right? And this is a discussion we just had with Randy Frederick where good companies getting sold off with the rest of the market, you know, bears an opportunity for some people to buy good companies. Chipotle might be, I don't know for sure, might be one of those. It still has a lot to do. But Megan, uh, you know, your final thoughts on, yeah. is this, a buy, in Like Folio's opinion, a game changer for this? Is this a good, healthy addition, or are more people bashing it than liking it, Megan? I think that I think game changer is a strong word. When we look at our earnings signal, we have Chipotle coming in around a 29. So anything above a 20 is bullish for us. But I will say that we're cautiously bullish just because we don't know how um, you know inflationary pressures may impact the company. But just in general, from from our data perspective, it's positive to see digital and foot traffic improving at the same time. And it's also nice to see Chipotle have pricing power. You know, in the last quarter, they announced I think a 4% price hike on menu items to um, kind of offset the cost of rising wages. And we didn't really see that impact sentiment. And the fact that we're still seeing rising demand, even considering that price hike, I think is a really positive thing long term, but short term, um, cautiously bullish for this report. Cautiously bullish on this and uh, stocks pull back, uh, you know, over 25 percent from those all time highs. So maybe an opportunity here uh, and you guys have positive yeah. data. Always great stuff, Megan. Next time we're going to we're going to probably have to bring in a burger <laughs> chain or something uh, that doesn't have any uh, plant based meat or anything. Uh, get your take on that one. All right. Great stuff. As always, Megan, have a great day. Thanks, guys. Y'all, too. All right. That's Megan Brantley, the vice president of research at likefolio.com.